Hello again everyone, Quickshow14 here again with another tutorial. This time we're going to talk about uh, primarily uh, presets and uh, multi-dimensional arrays and uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I'm using right now. I haven't really used records much. I uh, probably will in the future for other stuff. It's mainly useful for libraries and things like that. But uh, we're mainly going to focus on presets and uh, multi-dimensional arrays. Uh, Again, this is a tutorial. I'm using my, of course, my Ion Cannon Wars map as the uh, template. Uh, if you want more information about that map and everything like that, please be on the lookout for the videos uh, about them coming up uh, if they're not already out. And of course, the map will be released as well with that. Uh, so there should be a link for that when those tutorial videos come out, and also be on StarCraft2Mapster.com. So, real quick, what is a preset? Uh, presets. Are, uh, bar a little explanation. If you've done programming in any way, shape, or form, uh, enums comes to mind off the top of my, or sorry, uh, come off the top of my head. Also known as enumerators. Uh, enumerators or enums are basically uh, a, uh, an array, I guess you can call them, or a list of integers that have a uh, kind of like a, a text value to them. Now that's kind of confusing, uh, but basically, uh, say you a boolean, for example. A boolean is a great example of an enum or a numerator. Uh, zero usually is false. One is usually true. Uh, it, they're just integers, zero and one. But behind it, you put true or false, and that's that's a very very simple enumerator. Presets are basically the same thing. But they're a little more powerful, and the way, way I, reason I say that is because not only can you act them as a standard uh, enumerator, and in fact that's the way they start out with. So you create a new uh, preset uh, by doing new preset type. It's going to bring it up, and it'll start with uh, something you know, untitled preset. The value will always be uh, initially integer. So like an enumerator, and then of course the values you want with it. Integer is most common. You're probably going to use it a lot, but you can do more uh, with it. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute. So basically, you set up values here. I have something called alerts for my different alert types, some of my newer alert types. Um, I'll show how to create new alert types with the data editor in a future tutorial. Uh, so I've created an alert presets to basically make it easy to control. Now, first question. Why would I want to do this? If you're having, uh, you want to be more specific on what a user puts into a, uh, a function, uh, an action, uh, stuff like that, parameters are being passed on and stuff like that, and you want to be more restrictive and specific to it, using presets are great because it's going to save you coding time. So instead of having a whole bunch of if then else's or conditions or checks to make sure that what they put in is valid, just put a preset in there as your parameter. And, and do it from that because then they have to choose from that preset and it makes things easier it also makes it easier to read and understand if if somebody else comes to your code and wants to use it or is is making changes to it this will be very important if you're you're looking to making libraries or for yourself or for others and it's also great for you because uh, you make a map you work on it trigger stuff and you do great and everything you move on to something else you come back because you want to update it make some fixes maybe there were some changes to StarCraft 2 editor like it's not beta anymore, something like that. You'll be able to come back, take a look at it, and understand your logic and what you were thinking behind it without without having to have a whole bunch of notes, uh, which is very very useful. So really, you can put anything you want, uh, integers, whatever you want them to be value. Most of the time, you're not going to do straight comparisons uh, based off their actual value. Now this is integer type. So in reality, even though I have text here, mineral mine gained, lost gained, lost, you know, blah blah blah. In reality, it's actually 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's just counting down as numbers. Uh, in this case, you don't see the numbers. They're just basic. So real quick, just to show you how to create one, uh, we've created our alerts here. We're going to add a new value. I'm just going to call this test value. or We'll call this no alert. Let's call it no alert. So say that, you know, we want to make sure that there are no alerts happening and we want to do that as here. You have a couple options here. Uh, script value will be grayed out. This I'll go into in just a minute. Uh, of course your script identifier is, is basically the ID of what that is. You can do it based off the name or you can specify your own. Use as default value, very important. By, by default, wow, 
I use it to defaults. By default, when you enter uh, things in there, no preset will have an initial value. If you want to set one, you want to click this. Uh, choice is yours. I like to use it. Previous parameter uh, means that, from what I can tell, I'm not 100% sure on this, but it means that in order to uh, check it, in order to set it, or something like that, a previous parameter, bleh, a previous parameter or variable or whatever must be this type. Uh, in this case, uh, the previous parameter for this, if you want this to be a preset, just whatever. I haven't really used it. I'm not 100% sure how it works. I tried to use it once. It didn't seem to work out very well. Uh, it looks like there is some tooltips here. If checked, this value will only be available for parameters if the previous parameter in the function matches the given type. Okay, so basically, it's saying that this will only show up if the previous parameter that's being used is of this type. So, for example, uh, if you were doing this in a, a check, and you put in a parameter to do the check, uh, a comparison, and the previous parameter of what you're comparing it to is a string, and you do equal as, and then you're checking uh, uh, from a uh, the preset list, uh, this wouldn't show up if it was set to integer. It would have to be set to string, something like that. If you want it available for any of them, just uncheck it. That's just fine. I haven't had any problems with that. And there you go. Very, very simple one. I don't need that, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So that's that's a straightforward preset. And honestly, uh, Galaxy Editor, uh, yeah, StarCraft 2 Galaxy Editor, or whatever his name is, again, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, went over this a little bit, but he just shows the straightforward. There's a lot more you can do here, much more complicated stuff. For example, let me, whoops, actually yes, I do want that, but I want to minimize this. Let me bring out my dialog items. If you watched my previous uh, tutorial on uh, uh, functions and action definitions and conditions, you remember this, me talking about this. This is not a standard integer. In fact, I actually have this set up as a custom script integer. So by default there are three options for value type. Integer, bit flag, custom script. Uh, you're going to get the most use out of either integer or custom script. Bit flag's a little more advanced. Even I haven't messed with it. Play around with it if you want. Uh, I haven't had a need so I haven't done so. And then you do the base type. And this could be anything from an integer to a unit so you can even do units, things like that. But it's important that this is no longer going to be compared or done the same way that you did others. So in this case, for my, my dialog item types, I'm pulling from a multi-dimensional array, specifically this array. And this has an array size of 2 and 50. How that works, and what that means, is that uh, your standard array uh, usually has a couple of boxes, if you will, a couple of information. In this case, I have 2 as my first, and that that's, uh, directly relates to the player. So player 1, player 2. Now. Just FYI, in case you were wondering, uh, StarCraft 2 for their variables does use a zero based index, and what that means, it means is that all arrays start at zero and count up, not one. So uh, if you have a zero based array, which is usually what an array starts as, is zero, it'll actually be counted as it has one item in it. Uh, if it has one, as your array, it has actually has two items in it. So just math-wise, th you're looking at the size two. It actually can contain three items, and that's uh, in spot zero, one, and two. I don't use it because if you do, I just ignore spot zero and just go straight for the extra one. And the reason I do that is it makes it easier to pass these functions on. If you actually use spot zero and spot one as player one and two, you would have to do some extra math operations to actually get the uh, proper uh, value. So in this case, even though it does use, and, and you probably were wondering, but it does use a zero base index, and I do know that, I don't, I act as if it doesn't. So I start all my stuff from one. I don't, I basically just ignore the zero value of an array, just FYI. So this is pretty much my players. So player one and player two, uh, and then there's 50. I, I can hold 50 dialog items in, in this. So each player. So if this was set for player one and one, it would be the first dialog item. One, two, second dialog item. One, three, so on and so forth. So think of this box as the player, 
container, and think of this box as the dialogue items contained by the player. So yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, uh, really, without a diagram or something. There's some really great stuff out there programming about arrays and multi-dimensional arrays. But think about it as as having different stuff. So basically, the second variable is 50. It means that if each one, whether it's uh, number one or number two, has 50 associated with it. And that's the power of multidimensional arrays. Quite complicated. We'll go more into that in just a bit. And of course, again, back to our, our actual uh, uh, presets that we're doing and all the different values and how you can mess around with it and how to actually use it in a function or a condition or an action and things of that nature here in part two. So please join me for part two.